Hey, come here. If you're thinking of starting a YouTube channel and you really want a good clickbaity way to start a video, well, check this out. Breaking news from the Radio DJ Dude World Headquarters. Here's Jeff, Radio DJ Dude. Thank you, Jeff. I am Jeff, the Radio DJ Dude, and this is big. We cleared a massive hurdle. We cracked some big time code by finding a way to automate audio processing on clips that you may already receive automatically. Maybe you run top of the hour news or traffic or an entertainment report that another service provider provides to you. A lot of times those files are kind of anemic. The levels are a little lower than you'd like. They don't run any compression or normalization. You just kind of get an as is file, which lacks the audio punch that you're looking for. We found a way to write some code that now will not only help you bring all those automated files into your system, but now automatically add audio processing. All in one fell swoop without your hands having to touch anything. So for all you automated radio rock stars, if this sounds interesting, well, yes, we are. We're about to jump into the how to right now. We are on the air. Yeah. Oh, I'm chomping at the bit to reveal the audio hoodoo voodoo. But first, the touching backstory of how this came to be. I take you back to a simpler time when I did that video on how to incorporate news and traffic reports into your station. Yes, magically, to the right, there it is. There's a link to watch it. But the one thing that became very clear when we were experimenting with these files that content providers send, as I mentioned, crappy levels. And that's no bueno if you're looking for a muy bien sound. Wow, this video is positioned to go viral in Latin America. I love it. And don't think this is just limited for news and traffic reports. Maybe you have some remote DJs sending tracks in that are less than optimal. Well, you can run those tracks through this workflow too. So I think we're all on the same page regarding the problem. Audio files that need a little help before they hit your ear. But how do you do that if you run an automated radio station? Maybe being run by rotations, like I do with my all 80s flamethrower triple X 80s which runs using rotations within Radio DJ. Well, this little ditty of a workflow might just float your dinghy. There are three steps to making this magic. One, in Audacity, you have to create a macro that performs all the actions that cause your earlobes to wiggle and jiggle. For me, that's the audio processing, the normalization, the compression, the noise gate. Something else also emerged. Another broadcasting dude brought this to my attention. Sometimes the audio files the news agencies send you may have some silence at the end. I mean, come on. For one, they should know better. Right here, we have two seconds of silence. And that sounds like crap hola on your ear. So what do you do? We're trying to give you a hands-free, automatic approach to this process. Well, yes, another trick awaits up my short sleeve. So if we go back to our macro, I've added a line item here. Look at number seven, truncate silence. And upon inspection, here's what we're telling it to do. Detect silence at negative 50 dB. So basically, whenever there's silence. If that silence is 1.2 seconds or greater, you're going to cut it down to 0.2 seconds. Or you enter values that make sense to you. Okay, we like that. So that's now in the stack. But you have to have your macro dialed in, you have to create a shortcut to it. And you can see this macro that I just showed you has the shortcut Control Shift M, which you embed in the PowerShell script. One other thing to keep in mind in directories, this is where you have to set where your files being saved by a macro are going to be saved to which directory. So for me, it's that news reports folder. There it is, news reports. It creates a new folder called macro output and then it puts the saved file into that folder. Now this will change up your workflow in Radio DJ. So in Radio DJ, it's key that we do make one change. This is the path to the unprocessed news file that the service sends us. What we wanna do is tell it to now look in macro output and link it up to this file. And that's all you have to do, save it, now you're in business. But don't forget to do that or you'll miss out on all these benefits. Because if Radio DJ is looking for news.mp3 in news reports, it will get the unprocessed version. Another setting to tweak while you're in Audacity is in warnings. 
And you want to make sure these two are unchecked. Saving projects versus exporting audio and saving empty project. That just makes it easier to exit the app sometimes. Step two is writing the PowerShell script. So this line of the script tells the computer where to find Audacity. This line tells it where to find your audio file. So it launches Audacity, opens your audio file, waits a couple seconds, then hits our magic keystroke, which fires off our macro, waits another three seconds, and then exits the app. So let's turn the crank on this thing and see if it works. Audacity's opening. There's our news file. It waits three seconds. And then over in our macro output, here is the edited news file. So looky here. It's run our audio processing. We have some beefy audio levels. And right here, it's chopped off all that silence. But once again, it's best to trust but verify. Let me bring in the original audio file. Side by side, baby. Look at that. So I dig this script. I think this is a rock star macro. Does everything we need in one felled swoop without any double clicky of our fingers. Now, if you don't want to monkey with creating your own macros, you just don't have the time, that stresses you out. I have a couple of Audacity macro presets over in my little rinky-dink shop. Of course, bargain basement prices apply, so go check those out if that's of interest. And step three is launching that script. So in the video about how to add news and traffic reports to your station, I created an automated workflow using RoboIntern. And what we first did was rename the file the content provider would send us, and then we'd move it to a new directory. And that's all good and fine. So now the proposition, whether you choose to put a ring on it or not, is to add one more action to your stack. And that is to run a PowerShell script. And when I first tried this, it didn't make any headway. This would not work for me. But by dumb luck, which is what I built my career upon, I found the path to PowerShell in Windows. I pop that baby in the script path window. And in parameters, this is really important. And I'll include this in the description. But you got to have this string, which tells PowerShell which script to open up once it's executed. And this is where you enter the path to your PowerShell script. Then, of course, you have to set your trigger. And if it's already part of your other stack, I think it just is triggered after the previous action. And you could set that up here in RoboIntern. Because you've come to know and, well, tolerate me, you know I'm all about the options. If you'd prefer to run this action within Radio DJ, there is a solution. You can actually create an event using some of the same parameters we used in our RoboIntern action. Entering the path to PowerShell right in this window, and down here, you paste the argument. So if you don't need some of the other tasks that RoboIntern provides, let's say your content provider provides that same file with the same name and the same directory every time, then you can opt to run this process all within Radio DJ using an event. So let's do this. Let's run this as a timed event, and let's have it hit at 30, which is coming up in less than 20 seconds. There we go. This should run the audio processing event. It'll launch Audacity, work its magic, close Audacity, then, then deposit our processed news.mp3 file in our macro output folder. You see, it's hard at work now. It's done the deed. It's now going to quit Audacity, and we're back to Radio DJ. Okay, let's double check the math here to make sure everything added up. And looky, looky, there's our punchy news file. Look at those levels. Beautiful. And it's even trimmed the silence. So we are loving it. And just like that, you're processing your audio hands-free. So instead of a mouse in your hand, you've replaced it with something, oh, so much more desirable. Mm-hmm, that. Now I get it. That workflow may not be for everyone. I mean, that coding alone could send people running for the hills. But I just want to tell you, I want to encourage you that if I was able to pull this off, I know you can handle it too. Just go slowly, rewatch this video if you need to, make sure that you're completing all the steps, and I think you can make some of this magic, if that's what you're looking to do. This is kind of an advanced concept, but just know that you have it in your toolbox in case you ever in the future need to reference it. And I think the bigger lesson is, Anything that you've got stuck up here, 
there is an AI bot out there that could help you make that reality. So don't be shy, hit up ChatGPT with any nutty idea that you might have, and you might just be surprised at the code that it can produce to help bridge that gap between fantasy and reality. Hopefully you got something out of this, and I'd love to hear how you're thinking of implementing it in the comments below. I'd also be on cloud 10 if you could drop me a like and subscribe. I do thank you very much. I'm Jeff, the radio DJ dude, and until our next little radio rendezvous, just please do one thing for me and keep rocking those mics all over the world. <laughs>